Hey everybody, it's Monica with King's Titan Homestead getting the day going and uh, yesterday I uh, went in and was uh, helping some hobbyists working bees and delivering some queens and whenever I go past a thrift store whoop, I have to stop in there and <clears throat> sometimes you know I find stuff that I want to uh, get for resale or things that I need around the homestead and sometimes you run into stuff you're you're just going oh my gosh I didn't even realize I need that and when I say things like that I mean need like emergency supplies you don't even think about I haven't seen one of these since I was a child um, I we used to have a two-story house um, and my dad had one of these available on the upper level in case of a fire. So this literally is a ladder that you hook on the window, ta-da, and it unfolds and flips down to get off the second story in case of a fire. Um, I have a second level here, and though nobody really stays up there, um, this is just something that I think is a good idea to have, and guess what? paid six dollars and fifty cents for it oh my gosh you know I snatched that right up and who knows we might even use this for other projects that we you know if we have to I don't know clean one of our tanks out or do something odd um, who knows where this will come in handy but for six dollars fifty cents oh dang this is coming home with me <clears throat> I already have one tray done and now I'm doing another. These are all the octopus agave. And I'm just taking the pups off the stalk and shoving them in some potting soil and we'll see who gets, to, who takes. Octopus agave are fabulous for pollinators. Um, it takes a long time before they send their stalk up. But what's really nice is that they're fairly drought resistant. Uh, you don't have to water them once they're established and eventually they'll send up this just smorgasbord of nectars and, and just, you see every pollinator on them. They absolutely go nuts. The entire stalk is humming as it's blooming and I absolutely love them. I think everybody should have some octopus agave and what's really awesome is that these plants these agaves send off so many pups and so many seeds that everybody can. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is show you real quick on how easy it is to propagate the octopus agave. And I literally have, I think three more stalks being gifted to me. And these stalks have about, you know, three, 400 pups each. So I'm gonna have to go get me some more of these um, planter boxes that I'm using and some more potting soil before I even pick those stalks up. But give me a second and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the octopus agave stalk. And as you can tell, all of these pups, um, I've just been pulling off here and there, just pulling off. I'm kind of starting with some of the bigger ones. Uh, so I just have to pull them off like this. And you can even see, look at the little roots growing on that. And then this, this here is a concrete mixing bin from like Home Depot or Lowe's. I think they're five, six dollars. Not sure if they're still that. I know prices are going up like crazy right now. But I just drill a couple holes in the bottom of the mixing bin so that there is a little bit of drainage. And then basically with my fingers pinched down at the base, I just push that in and my fingers are holding the root system as I push so that the roots don't get damaged. And that's just, just literally how quick it is to plant these in. And then once they're in, then I'm going to water them nice. And literally, I'll have hundreds of babies just in this one uh, container. We'll see who gets who gets um, roots started. And then I'll transplant them once they get really big. I'm not going to transplant them as soon as they get set roots. I'm literally gonna, they don't mind being clustered together. I mean, just take a peek. This is a different type of agave, but look at how all the pups are like clustered. They don't have to be separated right away. 
I am not going to separate every one of them when they're only this big. I'm going to wait until this thing is just like overflowing. Um, so in the future, hopefully I'll have some of that to show you. Okay, so that's two trays. This one um, didn't get as tight. That's because there's a couple Mexican petunias in there and some uh, um, uh, mother of millions and kind of... Um, I know that they will grow a little bit bigger and didn't want to put too many in that one. This one is nice and, and tight. I really did a good job on this one. Not to just pat myself on the back. Um, but now I'm going to water them and I need to get probably at least another three or four trays just to finish this one stock out. So that would mean that I probably will need to pick up Oh, what, 15 or 20 more trays total because I have three more stocks coming? That's going to be a lot of octopus agaves. Isn't she pretty? It's like velvet to the touch. Mexican sage. I've seen this at Tohono Chul Park. In fact, I bought this plant at Tohono Chul Park and they had a huge area over by their performance gardens and the hummingbirds were going absolutely bazonkers over it. And I actually have butterflies working at it on a pretty consistent basis. Easy girl. Okay, I'm gonna stop and check out my button bush. Um, these are actually all over um, along the lakes and swamps in Florida. And whenever they bloom, it gets this absolutely stunning little puff ball of white blossom that the bees go berserk over. And uh, of course, I love it when the pollinators go berserk over a plant. So this is another pollinator plant that I brought in and it is native to Arizona. The problem is it likes to stay pretty moist. So um, because my conditions are not exactly perfect for it, I put it into a double um, system where this one, this one has drain holes where this one does not. Um, the bottom one will actually hold water and this one um, drains into the bottom so that the root system can still receive water from the bottom. It's kind of like the way that I um, was growing some of my bananas earlier and now my bananas are just so small. Um, I lost them during the really bad drought of only five inches in the year last year. And so I'm going to start over and actually make a greenhouse for my bananas. But I'm all excited about starting these beautiful button bush. Something else that I've been dying to put in. I tried it a long time ago and it froze and now I'm a little worried that it might freeze again because it is such a young plant and struggling. It literally was so root bound that I could barely get the roots cut in order to get it in the ground. Um, but I'm hoping that I can actually do a cover because I have a, a Troya skeleton here that might go over to this stuff here and be able to cover it during um, the harsh, if we have any harsh freezes. And this is called a Maximilian or Mexican sunflower. And these are really prolific. Again, down in Florida, my, my dad started them. He's got the green thumb. Started them one spot. Now they can't seem to get rid of them. And uh, he actually has propagated them everywhere and um, has some uh, even rows of these gorgeous sunflowers. The bees absolutely love the pollen on these. All right, brass, don't be laying on any flowers. And this is the last little pollinator plant that I put in today and the idea is that I train it up along the fence. And this is a uh, queen's wreath. I think it's also called coral vine. 
and this is also another plus for the pollinators. Um, I want to try to get this uh, to go along the entire fence line. Uh, once it gets started, it's pretty hardy. So, uh, but the whole idea is keeping it from freezing, getting it established so that it comes back from year to year. Um, again, coral vine or queen's, queen's wreath, uh, another must for pollinators. This is a desert broom. Many people rip it out. It is an allergen to a lot of people. But every year, I'm just astonished by the amount of pollinators that visit this. And it's actually not even the right time of day. There's bees working on it. And uh, earlier in the morning, this thing was just humming. I got out here a little too late. And everything takes advantage. I got a spider web right in here. Oh, there she is. She's wanting to, uh, am I going to get her? She's preying on everything that's feeding here. Just waiting patiently. This is reason why I really don't care for praying mantises. They just sit on my beehives, eating bees. And just look at how fat that girl is. There she goes, she just got another one. That bee is still alive while she's eating him. the other bee yards that already got robbing started so I shut that one down and then I came just to requeen real quick some of the bee removals I've been bringing in so uh, let's see here okay disregard the f7 virgins uh, that was an old swarm that I had caught that had seven virgins in it um, this was a uh, where did they come from Shoot, now I can't recall. Oh, underneath the manufactured uh, home, the hive looked like it had been there for three years. It had recently requeened. Um, I think that the queen was still a virgin because I had no eggs. So I killed her and now they have a European queen. Okay, this was a swarm that had been hanging in a tree for two weeks. Um, there is a queen. Um, they're finally starting to settle down. It's taken them forever to put um, the syrup into the comb. And now that they're doing that, now I released her just to see. Let's hope that they stay there. She starts laying eggs, hopefully, and then I can um, requeen them. Okay, this is one of my previous ferals that I killed the queen in a couple days ago. They're nice and uh, fairly gentle, so I put a new queen in them as well. Um, that's a hive that I keep as a donor hive. And then when I came over here, I had to be careful not to step on this cluster of bees. I don't know what's going on here. It looks like a swarm had landed here yesterday, got cold in the night. Um, so I'm getting them set up with a new house. I'm gonna be looking for the queen right now. I just laid a, um, frame uh, down on the side to uh, have them start uh, crawling over onto so that I can look for the queen easier. Okay, so the one thing I don't want this swarm to do is like uh, fly away or anything. So I'm gonna not disturb it very much because we all know that the queen probably can fly. 
And so we're gonna start looking for her in this clump. Oh, there she is right away. Right there. All right, baby girl, let's get in a cage. Okay, so let's see if they figure this out. I put the queen inside the box. Just need a few to get going here. And uh, the ones that were on the frame, I put those right away in the box with the queen as well. So they should start smelling her um, and realize where they need to go here in just a minute. I got a feeling this could be the swarm that was in the back. I'm not sure, I'll have to go check. But kinda not figuring it out yet. Come on girls. I don't have a lot of time to make sure that you go in there and take care of her. Okay, they're going now. I gave them a little smoke push. Some of them are going underneath, but some of them are making their way inside. Okay, need another syrup bottle for these girls. All right, and now to go to the back and check to see if the swarm that landed yesterday or two days ago probably two days ago. Actually, no, it was Sunday. Actually, no, it was Saturday. It was Saturday evening um, at four o'clock. I noticed them land. Uh, I was working some hives and they got uh, all, they landed right next to me when I was working them. And I'm going to go back to the back now. I didn't have any time because I had to, uh, uh, take Queens and uh, go visit a hobbyist and I had no time so I literally just pointed at him said stay put I'll be back tomorrow and then when Adita and Milosh were here on the next day on Sunday I said we better go check on that swarm and sure enough they were still there and we caged the Queen and set them up with some sugar syrup so I better go check to see if they're still in that box Okay, here they are. They're not doing too bad. I was worried that ants might be starting to get to them. Uh, nobody coming in and out, but there is a gigantic crack in the lid. Oh, there are ants. Okay, we're gonna have to get this baby up off the ground. And here's the swarm. How you girls doing? Okay, not a whole lot of time today, so yes, they were still in there. Uh, their numbers look a little lower than what they had been. The queen is still in her cage. You know, it could have even been that there was two queens in that swarm, and just lately I've been just stretched thin with everything that I'm doing, and uh, maybe I missed a queen last time. And uh, part of the uh, bees separated and the other part of them went over to where we were working uh sunday evening or sunday afternoon uh, because the pheromones the the just the activity of opening up hives tends to uh call swarms in so uh never a dull moment ever okay oh my goodness um you guys know how i mentioned how there's never a dull moment well this is just an equipment stack I think we might have some visitors. Hello, ladies. Hello. Would you guys like to be put at a table and given a menu, huh? Oh yeah, you would. Where did you come from? Oh my goodness, welcome. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Like I said, never a dull moment. Okay. Y'all are gonna need a feeder in there. Hold on. 